Once I've decided what I'm going to make out of hard slab, the first thing I'm going to do is roll enough slabs for that project. When I make something out of hard slab, I'm going to be rolling the slabs out and then drying them till they are just leather hard and then putting them together. So I want them to all be the same uh, dryness when I put them together because if they're not, one wall might shrink too much um, or flop over um, because it's a different wetness. So those are our two main things that we're worried about, right? Something being a different wetness could allow it to dry um, slower or more quickly than something else. And if it's not strong enough to hold itself up, it might be flopping over. Whereas with hard slab, we shouldn't have that problem. Um, so I'm gonna roll out as many slabs as I need and maybe a little bit extra. Um, just keep in mind what size you're working with um, so that you don't, you know, you may have... Once I decide what I'm making out of slab, I'm gonna roll all my slabs for it. When we are working with hard slab, there's a couple of things we wanna keep in mind. Uh, one, we wanna roll all the slabs we need from the start, and that is because we want to monitor their drying, get them to leather hard, which is the stage that we will work with them at, and we want them to get there together. Um, if we uh, just do part of the slabs we need and we do other ones later, um, if we're not careful with the drying, if they're um, too different, we could find that one dries quicker or slower and that gives us cracking. Um, the other reason that we want to roll them all at the same time is because as we're putting something together, if we go to put the last piece on and it's much more wet than the rest, um, in addition to that worrying about cracking, we have a worry that it might not support itself and so that will in turn lead to possible cracking or structural problems. So as best you can, roll everything at the same time. If you find yourself missing a piece of slab, no worries. Your troubleshooting there is going to be to control the drying of the slabs that are already rolled um, and potentially put together. Um, give them a spritz, wrap them tightly in plastic completely around and not touching any wood or tabletop and then bring the additional slab up to that leather hard stage before you attach them. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to roll your slabs, go back to this video. I'll post it up here. Um, but just a quick piece of information for project one. You want your slabs to be at least a quarter of an inch thick, so shoot for a quarter of an inch thick. A tiny little bit thicker would be fine. Don't go any thinner. That is just going to make connecting your pieces a lot easier. slab project I'm gonna recreate this so again we are making a sculpture of this I'm going to just make a rectangle and then add details on to make it look like a mold um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a quick sketch um, I would call this a diagram I love using diagrams and I'm going to measure this I don't have to make this life-size but I am gonna measure it just to get an idea of the proportion um, when I make slabs um, there are lots of ways to cut them and measure. I just measure my slabs the exact uh, size that I want them, um, and then I bevel the edges. If you're a woodworker, there might be other ways that you like to measure, and those are totally fine. I like to call this type of thing art math, and however you decide to do art math is easiest. For me, I like to cut the exact measurement and then bevel the edges, and I'm gonna show you that, but for right now, I'm gonna cut my slabs. So I need six slabs to make a box. There are two ways that you can get your slabs cut out. One way is to make templates. So for example, this is the top of my piece. Um, the other way is just to measure and cut out of your slabs. Either way is totally fine. I'm going to show you how to do both. I need two six by four and a quarter slabs. That's the top and bottom of the box. I need two six by three slabs. That's the sides the long way. And I need two three by four and a quarter slabs. Those are the sides the short way. I 
know I need two of them and so I can see where they fit best on my slab. Um, okay, so I know that I need two six inch slabs and I've got 12 inches here. So if I can get my uh, four and a quarter out, I will do that. And looks like I can get 12 inches out of this part of the slab, so that is what I'm going to do. So I'm measuring across six each. Okay. So I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to cut the rest out. keep my extra slab wrapped up really tight in case it can come in handy later. Um, I don't want it to get any harder than leather hard so I'm going to wrap it up really tight and I can just recycle it or throw it away if I don't need it later but I've already rolled the slabs so might as well hold on to them. Moment of truth. Will this all work out? So we've got our top and bottom slabs, our side slabs, and our short side slabs. And yay it works! Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bevel 
our edges so that everything will fit together and I'll show you how to do that. To bevel the edges, we're going to use our fettling knife and I'm just going to use the edge of it. I put my slab on the edge of the table and I'm going to show you how I do it and then I'll show you in the camera. And then I just cut the corner off of my slab. So let me show you. I cut the corner off. I'm going to try to do it up here in front of the camera. So on the edge of the table, I put it on the edge of the table just to make this easier. And then this corner, this top corner, I'm going to just cut it off at about a 45 degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to show you one more time again this corner. I'm just going to cut off. And we're just giving us room to work. We're going to be scratching and scoring this corner. Um, it does not need to be uh, perfect. We don't want to gouge. Actually, just exactly what I did. We don't want to gouge in too much. We just want to flatten up this corner a bit. And again, a 45 degree angle would be perfect, but like it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so there it is. It's beveled. I'm going to do that to all the slabs now. Okay, so we've got all of our um, pieces of our cube-like uh, structure beveled, and now we are going to move into construction. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scratch and score all of the edges. This is where your fork can come in handy, and um, I will show you right now. I'm just going to scratch up this corner really well, just like we did with our pinch pots, really mess it up, make it nice and velcro-y. I'm trying to maintain that 45 degree angle. And if you, you know, just cut off a little bit of the corner the first go around, this is where you can really make that angle shine. We don't wanna um, cut up this edge too much. We wanna keep that a nice smooth edge. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more here in front of the camera and then I'll show you what I actually do to make this a little easier. To be uh, as gentle as possible to this beautiful edge we want to keep nice and smooth. I put this again on the corner so that the edge is on the table and then I just scratch at that 45 degree angle. So I'm going to do the rest of these now. Okay, everyone has been scratched and scored now. So I'm gonna start construction. First thing I'm gonna do is decide which pieces are gonna to go together first. I like to start on a corner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some water on these scratched and scored edges. I don't need a ton of water, um, but just enough to kind of get everything just get a little bit into the grooves, the nooks and crannies, but I don't really want it dripping um, because that's gonna make this uh, slab stick to whatever it's on. Now, if it's on your board or something that is porous, it's not gonna be as bad as if it's on something plastic, so definitely don't do that. Put some paper down, put your board down. Um, then I'm going to moisten the edges of my second piece. So I'm gonna put my uh, two scratch and scored with just a little bit of water here together. And as you can see, it fits together. Those two 45 degree angles now make a 90 degree angle, 90-ish degree angle. I'm gonna use my finger on the back and I'm just gonna run it across the connection. So over here, it would look like me just running it across there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is, this will sound familiar, I'm gonna take a little piece of clay and I'm gonna roll a tiny little coil. Now because we have those nice clean corners and because we have an inside, we're gonna put that uh, coil on the inside. So I'm gonna lay that coil down. 
use a slightly moistened finger and I'm just gonna rub the coil in. I'm supporting from the back, that nice corner we've created. And do the same thing to the next piece. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. And when I fold it up, this is gonna go together here and this is gonna go together here. Again, I'm gonna use my finger to press this in see it a little better. I'm going to use my two fingers here to make a corner to press this in. If you get a little bit of friction, you can just use a little bit of water. And I'm not pressing super hard. I'm pressing firmly, but I'm not necessarily trying to push anything. Obviously, that connection we've made is quite moist right now. Just like with our rattle, we're going to construct this and then we're going to wrap it up in plastic overnight. Um, but right now, we're just going to make the major constructions. We're not trying to make things look perfect or completely clean yet. That's just not an option. I'm gonna add my coil here and I'm going to add a coil in the corner. A nice thin coil for soft clay. I'm gonna add that coil in the corner, slightly moistened finger, and I'm just going to basically rub the coil until it disappears, supporting on the outside so you don't break that connection, that Velcro connection. And as you can see, I've got a nice strong corner now. So I'm just gonna keep going, put all these side pieces together. If you get to a point where things feel floppy, um, stop and wait and let things get back to leather hard. Last one. It should. As you put your last uh, edge in, you'll see that things start to straighten up if they weren't already pretty straight to begin with. This is where they'll kind of um, square up. Again, continue supporting. Of course, these connections we're making are pretty moist right now. They should be pretty square, but again, we're not super worried about that right now. I'm just gonna put my last coil in. of that. So you can see there's a little bit of moisture, but otherwise it's quite smooth. Those coils have completely disappeared and that's going to be a really nice strong connection. And that's going to support the very last connection we make, which is our top um, slab, which will not have those coils. Um, so we'll show you that next. All right, so the last slab is going to go right on top. It's going to close the box. Now at this stage, if you've gotten this far, things are looking good, but you notice like my slab is not quite leather hard. And if it's not leather hard, it's gonna wanna slump in the middle. The wider your cube, the more likely it is to slump. So just check in at that moment. If it's still nice and leather hard, let's go ahead and do the last connection. Okay, so I just put water on. Uh, I'm gonna just hit these one more time. You definitely want that Velcro to really stick. Okay, so we're gonna put this right in there. As you can see, it falls in there quite nicely. You wanna just sort of gently edge it in using that little corner on my fingers that my fingers create. I love that, it's like a little speed square in my hand. Or a wooden a spatula paddle type thing is really nice here. But basically right now we're just smoothing those corners together until we see them meet. Again, we're not worried about it being the perfect connection quite yet. We just want them to meet. All right, looking pretty good. I can probably connect this just a little bit more. Okay, 
Okay, so yeah, so even if we see a little bit of roughness, remember that connection, it's very wet there, so if we try to smooth it, we could end up pulling some of the clay out, and we don't wanna do that. Um, we just wanna make sure that everything has met. All right, real quick, I'm just gonna turn this over, and I'm gonna make sure that all of these corners are equally as connected and beautiful. So we're just looking for nice, firm connection. All that Velcro is really like squished together. And once we get that, um, I'm gonna wrap this up. Something to note is that if your decoration does not eventually create a poked hole, you're gonna need to poke a hole in this before it gets fired. We're going to wrap this up tight and come back to it in 24 hours. Okay, we are back 24 hours later, and here is my cube. I'll keep that wrapped up for now. All right, so as you can see, actually you can't see, but as I can feel, those um, much softer areas where our connections were are somewhat homogenized now because they've all been under plastic together. Some of that moisture has moved into other parts of the um, pot. And we're going to go ahead and do some smoothing uh, around all the corners. Um, that's the final stage of this type of building. After that, we will just add on details and decoration. Okay, so I am just using my metal rib. I may also use my wooden rib, we'll see. And I'm just gonna use the rounded part to just kind of square up those corners. At least we have a little bit of extra that stays on the rib. All right, so I've got this little divot right here. I don't know if you can see. Um, and I would like that to be filled in. I'm just going to scratch and score the area a bit. Scratch and score my little knob of clay. Put just a bit of water and then go ahead with that slightly moistened finger, smooth that in, and then go ahead and clean it up with my metal rip. So I'm going to move to the next side. I'm kind of working from the outside in so that I keep that corner nice and sharp. Okay, now that we've got this pretty well smoothed um, with the rib, we're still gonna have some of these sharper spots and that is just because the rib does make some tool marks and does make some sh sharper spots. So I'm just gonna use my sponge to just gently clean up those tool marks. Now, this is still leather hard. As we're adding moisture, it's gonna be softer. So things like fingerprints, we're still gonna see, um, but this is gonna give us a generally nice, smooth canvas to work on to create whatever we want out of our slab project.